Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Instrumentation and Measurement. This is lecture number 4. Today we will discuss about generalized model of a system element and specifically we will discuss about the strain gauge model, copper constant and thermocouple and an accelerometer model. If we talk about the generalized model of a system element, it should be able to represent all the possible characteristics which are dominant. Now assume if we in if we ignore hysteresis or resolution effects, assume that they are not present in the element and the environmental effects and the nonlinear effects are present in, the, in that element, then the steady state output equation can be written uh, as a linear part Ki plus A, a nonlinear part or equation Ni, and in environmental effects Km, Im, I, this is the modifying input, and Ki, I, I which is the interfering input. Notice that uh, in modifying input we also multiply with the input variable i because in modifying input it changes the slope trend while ki and ii is just added as an offset because this is either it will uh, uh, move the curve uh, in above or below uh, this a offset. So if we make uh, a block diagram of this equation uh, we will draw it like this that we will have an input and this input is multiplied by k so this will give us the factor ki which is the first one and later on this ki will be added to a making the this so this will be the linear model this ki plus a will give us the output then we have uh, nonlinearity as a function of input so that's why uh, since this is an, uh, a function of input so this is taking the input from here and it will become an i here and then we have the uh, uh, in modifying input from the environment and interfering input from the environment so interfering input is multiplied with ki and is available for the rest of the equation as a additive term while k i m the modifying input will be multiplied with the k m and then it will be multiplied with the input i so that it will change the trend so it will contribute so this part this whole part will become uh, will make the uh, k m and uh, k uh, will make the new slope of uh, the system uh, <coughs> let's take this example of a strain gauge Assume that we have a strain gauge that has uh, unconstrained resistance of 100 ohms and a gauge factor of 2. And uh, uh, we ignore the nonlinearity and dynamic effects. Uh, we ignore them, they are neglectable. But the gauge, the resistance of the gauge is affected by the ambient temperature. So let's see how it will go. Uh, this is the basic model, and we have this equation. Since we say the nonlinearity and the dynamic dynamic effects are can be ignored or neglected, so we will remove this GS part. So there will be no dynamic uh, conservation here, and also the uh, the nonlinearity will be removed. So we will be left with the rest of the things. Uh, so uh, if we draw it uh, the strain gauge, so we will have input uh, uh, for the strain gauge as is E as strain as the input which is multiplied with the if you see here in this equation basic re, uh, relationship of the strain is the resistance change is uh, equals to this delta r it will be equals to uh, gauge g is the gauge factor e is the input strain and this r naught is the unconstrained uh, resistance so uh, we have e here and then we will have g here too and then we have this 100 ohm resistor uh, which is R0 will be coming here so basically in fact here we will be getting the uh, the change in the resistance due to uh, E so here what we will get is delta R a change in the resistance and the environmental effects uh, the, in the last line we say that uh, the gauge the, the resistance of this uh, strain gauge is affected by the ambient temperature uh, so uh, besides the strain so it is uh, coming uh, from the strain is coming from here but the environmental input temperature will be affecting the uh, resistance output so uh, in that sense if we compare uh, we only need to figure out what is ki and what is km so we need to find out how km 
and what is the modifying input and what is the interfering input for this practically what we do is we do experiment we collect data at different temperatures and from there through some kind of uh, uh, data analysis or uh, data mining or simple regression will be used to uh, estimate the best values for km and im this is what we do in the uh, in the lab so assume that the, the values are being detected and ki is uh, uh, 10 raised to the minus 2 and km is a large bit large quantity here as mentioned in the uh, in the source file figure 2.12a in Bentley so we keep it here to 10 raised to power 2 anyhow so this makes the the whole uh, block diagram so this is the complete uh, um, model a generalized model of a, of a strain gauge and um, this 100 ohm is added as uh, the un un unstrained resistance here to complete the model and finally we will have this equation of the model which is r equals to 100 which is a here plus 1 10, 10 raised to the power minus 2 t plus 2 10 raised to power 2 e plus 2 10 raised to power 2 t and e so this is the mathematical model this is the whole block diagram representation of this you might be given a, a sort of a, this model and from there you can drive the equation or vice versa so the second example is a copper constant and thermocouple in this figure uh, it this represents the linear model and nonlinearity as you uh, now notice that we have this time we have the nonlinearity here and there is no modifying input except we have only one interfering input here uh, so this figure is drawn by with the help of these equations the linear equation 52.17t uh, this is the ideal linear equation and, uh, and we have the nonlinear equation here uh, this whole nonlinear equation so using these two equations we are able to draw it and then we have this composition and finally we have this uh, uh, 1 upon 1 plus 10 s is the dynamic uh, the, the dynamic model of the input. recall that um, in a thermocouple installation uh, it consists basically of uh, two uh, junctions a measurement junction at T1 and a reference junction at T2 and the resultant EMF is the difference of the two junction potentials and thus depends on both T1 and T2 so we have one in temperature in which we are actually involved we, this is the temperature that we want to know uh, but uh, the thermocouple works uh, with respect to a reference temperature so T2 is a, a reference temperature and in case of any um, any, any problem in the T2 uh, we, we will see uh, we have to compensate that one so the reference temperature is T2 and the the EMF will be e, uh, ET1 minus ET2 and T2 is basically here uh, acting as an interfering input. Uh, so note that the model applies to the situation where T2 uh, is a small compared with T1 so that ET2, the EMF of T2 can be approximated by 38.74 T2 which is the uh, largest term here and this is the in, in this in this uh, equation the, so the and the dynamics are represented by the first order this dynamic is represented by the first order model with a time constant of 10 seconds so this is the model of a thermocouple uh, next is uh, uh, an example of a uh, uh, SRometer uh, which represents the linear sensitivity is around uh, 0.35 uh, uh, millivolts per, uh, per, per meter per second square and uh, non-linearity is negligible so it is not present and uh, here any uh, transverse acceleration uh, that is any acceleration which is uh, perpendicular to that being measured for example we are measuring acceleration in this direction and any transverse acceleration um, acts as an interfering input and the uh, the sensitivity constant is uh, 6 10 raised to minus 3 and the dynamics are represented by a second order transfer function here this is the dynamics uh, represented for the uh, astrometer by a second order uh, uh, transfer function uh, with the natural frequency of 250 hertz and a damping coefficient of uh, 0.7 so zeta is this uh, so this is the example of a uh, astrometer uh, that's it uh, if for any question uh, please uh, uh, write me uh, on this email thank you very much